There's a steady stream of customers at Elizabeth Kialo's hair salon an hour outside the Kenyan capital of Nairobi. She credits her success to a steady stream of electricity. Her small shop used to go dark when the power went down, a frequent occurrence, but she doesn't have that problem anymore. The power lines that run into Elizabeth's shop have changed her life and that of her neighbors. Businesses don't have to close when the sun goes down. People can walk at night with less fear of crime. It's lines like these that lead back to the source of Kenya's new hope for consistent, affordable energy. Through Kenya's countryside, through the Okaria power plant, to this. What looks like smoke is actually steam. It erupts from under the Earth's surface, forming the basis of geothermal energy, one of the world's most reliable and green sources of power. This red ground behind here is actually the indicator that tells you there has been contact between water and heat. Geothermal is heat from the ground and you use water to bring the heat to the surface. Geothermal power plants work like this. Pockets of water deep beneath the earth are superheated by magma or melted rock. The water is piped to the surface where boiling hot steam powers generators. There's little pollution and the supply of electricity can last for generations. That's because when the water is cooled, it's returned to the underground reservoir so the process can be repeated over and over again. Kenya is on a geothermal juggernaut. 13% of all electricity in the country is already generated by geothermal plants. And the plan is to boost that number in just a few short years. Kenya is not alone. The World Bank has invested $1.8 billion in geothermal energy in developing countries around the world. Wind and solar power depend on weather. Importing coal or oil is expensive, leads to pollution, and can negatively impact a country's balance of payments. But geothermal is homegrown, clean, and reliable. And while most sources are found along tectonic plates, new research indicates that geothermal activity may be much more widespread than previously thought. Developing countries in Southeast Asia, Africa, and Central America have untapped resources. The environmental impact is so low, the Okaria power plant sits within the boundaries of Hell's Gate National Park. Wildlife and geysers exist side by side. Okaria is the only power plant that is within a national park. So we do have a memorandum of understanding with the Kenya Wildlife Service on how to manage the geothermal and also conserve the wildlife. The drawback? Exploring for suitable underground reservoirs can be prohibitively expensive. It's like searching for oil. Drilling a single well can cost around $7 million, and many poorer countries lack the capital they need to invest. To minimize the risks, these countries must rely on international cooperation to scale up geothermal exploration. Drilling can also disrupt the environment, but to minimize the impact, Kenya's state-owned geothermal development company is reforesting the landscape. We are nurturing seedlings that we use to replant in areas that we have uh, disturbed. We replant to make sure that the environment is back to where it was. For Kenya, like other nations, the costs of exploration are worth it. Without electricity, even simple tasks become time-consuming and difficult. There are limited opportunities to expand businesses and lift workers out of poverty. This small market for Maasai herders is far from Elizabeth's hair salon. But barbershop owner Daniel Moy is looking forward to what she has, reliable and affordable electricity. For now, he uses a generator to power his electric shaver and to run his side business, charging cell phones. 
huwa nazima watu mazimu zikiwa mingi ndio nawahakisha naanza kunyoa lakini stima ikiwa hata mtu akikuja asubuhi na nyoa Outside of Daniel's shop new power lines crisscross the sky the electricity will be turned on soon and like many others in the developing world he and his community will have a brighter future